Hi, everyone. Welcome to our talk. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome to our talk, You're Good Enough, Combating Imposter Syndrome in Cloud Native Communities. And so we wanted to start off with some intros. Besides being two software engineers at Grafana Labs, who are we? So my name is Ia, pronounced she, her. I'm originally from Eastern Europe, but currently I live in Berlin. Um, I identify as a woman, as a feminine person, and um, I'm actually a mathematician who works uh, in, as a software engineer. Uh, in my free time, I'm actually a trained classical singer. That's my hobby. I'm a big fan of drag, and uh, I bake sourdough bread. And currently, or recently, I became uh, also a community organizer. And I'm Kat. My pronouns are they, them. I live in Brooklyn, New York, and I'm a second generation non-binary Asian American. And I'm also a sociologist turned software engineer. In my free time, I'm a mahjong player, photographer, learning how to dance, and I'm also a foodie. So to the right, you can see me with some snow fungus stew I made, which is a traditional Chinese medicine. And if you're interested in the recipe, you can come talk to me after the talk. So we have a few goals for today. The first one is for those of you who have maybe never experienced imposter syndrome or you don't experience it at the moment, we want to help you understand how to support your colleagues who do experience imposter syndrome. And our second goal is for those of you who do experience imposter syndrome, we want to help expand your toolkit to manage the symptoms and give you tools to empower you. And by doing the first two goals, our ultimate one is to strengthen the engineering community. And so our pitch to you is that less imposter syndrome leads to happier engineers, because trust me, and I know, if you're not suffering, you're more likely to enjoy being at work. And this will lead to more productive and connective teams, because if you're on one, you're more likely to stay at the company longer, work better with your teammates, resulting in lower turnover rate and saving the company money. We also want to manage your expectations. So even though Kat is a trained social sociologist, we are both software engineers, and so we are not psychologists. We just were thinking that even though we are not experts on the topic, we managed to create something that worked for us, and we would hope that it would work for you as well. So let's start with defining imposter syndrome. It's a term coined by psychologists Pauline Clance and Suzanne Imes in 1978, and it's estimated about 70% of people have experienced it at least once in their lifetime. And so let's talk about some symptoms. Perfectionism is one of them, and it's one that I struggle heavy, heavily with the most. It's setting impossibly high goals for yourself. For example, when I first joined Grafana Labs, fresh out of boot camp, I thought, oh, within a few months, my engineering manager will realize that I'm actually at a principal level and re-level me. But really, that wasn't the case. Um, superheroism is closely tied with perfectionism and it's over preparing for tasks so you seem more than capable of doing them. For example, when Ida and I were preparing for this talk, I wanted to take an hour each morning just to myself so I could perfect my script, perfect the slides so I could show her a polished finished product before we even started. It was polished. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and these two things can lead to a fear of failure because now you've set the bar extraordinarily high. Also, attributing uh, one's own competence to external factors such as luck or someone else helping you is another symptom. Um, and this one is also tough for me because coming from an Asian household, we were taught to be humble. So sometimes owning up to my accomplishments feels like bragging. And lastly, all of this can lead to anxiety, depression, and burnout. And you don't have to check all the boxes, but I encourage you to think if any of them affect you. Lastly, Discrimination, social stigmas, and microaggressions could exacerbate symptoms of imposter syndrome for marginalized people. Especially when you're, for instance, a first woman on, on the team, and people left you out out of technical conversations, or they don't ask you any technical questions, it makes you feel more of an imposter and less connected to the team. So what do we do? How do we fight imposter syndrome? Um, before. We will offer some steps and some tips, but before diving into steps and tips, I want you to consider the perspective that really shaped our talk or our approach. So when we talk about software, all of us, we work on some code basis, or most of us, I assume. We have strong, a scale of stronger and weaker systems. I think usually we are somewhere on that scale. 
what makes the system strong. It's reliability, testability, maintainability, and so on and so forth. This is not something we are going to talk about. But if this system breaks with introducing a small bug or it, you just have, it's, it's, it's broken, how do we as engineers approach uh, this issue? Usually the solution is, I don't know, it depends on your bug, but adding more integration tests or introducing more scaling. So we look at the system as a whole and we are trying to make it stronger and more resilient for also for a future bug not to be introduced that easily. This is a perspective that I really want you to keep when we are tackling imposter syndrome. So our mantra for our talk will be fix the system, not the people. Here the system we are talking about, not a uh, software system, uh, but about feelings and emotions and being on the team. So who is actually the system? The system are mentors, uh, C executives, uh, leadership, managers, every single person in the organization is, uh, is the system. Everyone creates the culture. Of course, leadership and management and people who create values, those people have a bigger impact on the, on the culture, but every single person does have an impact. Um, I men mentioned on the previous slide mentors. So what is mentorship? Mentorship is a relationship between two people, uh, between a mentor and a mentee. Uh, who is a mentor? Mentor is a more experienced and trusted person uh, who can give advice and help out. And so for instance, Kat and I, we are in the mentor-mentorship relationship. And I personally did not consider myself being a mentor until I, st I started doing it. And I would encourage definitely everyone here to think about if they could be potentially mentors. I would, if, I would ask these questions. Do you like people? Are you passionate about helping others? Do you like connection? Do you like connecting to others? Or would you like to be better at connecting to others? If any of the answers is yes to any of these questions, please consider mentorship. Even though if you tried mentorship and it did not work out for you, it's, mentorship is like any other relationship. It's, um, it's, sometimes it's not the match. And if you're not the match, try again with someone else. I was really lucky to have Kat and we, we managed to uh, vibe really well. So let's dive into specific steps how to uh, tackle imposter syndrome. So we will be talking from a perspective of a mentor and a mentee because that's our relationship, but this can apply to anyone who is on the, as a, to any leader or a team member, individual contributor. So my motivation for my mentorship style was definitely, I was trying to give what I wish I had. So me as a feminine person, I usually was the first woman on the team and I wasn't connecting easily to my colleagues. It took so, usually a lot of time. I, I'm not into gaming. I don't care about the release of the new Apple Watch. So it was, <laughs> it was really difficult. I felt really alone and isolated most of the time. And um, don't worry about me now. I have a great mentor, Hi Serge, and I'm taken care of, but this heavily influenced uh, my, how I approach uh, mentorship. So be present and listen. So active listening is you're being present and you listen to what the other person says, but also you look at their face and maybe listen to the tone of their voice. And so, for example, Ida will always point out when the tone of my voice goes an octave lower because usually that means I'm stressed or worried about something. And whenever she does that, I go, oh, she's really paying attention to what I'm saying. Yeah. And for instance, eye contact, also very underrated. If you're in a meeting and you're scrolling through your Slack slides or you're pushing a new committee or a PR, I would encourage you not to do this in your one-on-ones because these things, especially many of you, I assume work on remote settings and keeping a connection online or building a connection online is not simple. So these things can make a difference. Also some fa facial expressions, they even change the tone of your voice. voice. I'm not encouraging anyone to smile. I'm a woman, I don't like to be told to smile. So, <laughs> but these things do make a difference. And so another tip that we have is being curious about your colleagues. And I would say that Ida's interest in me set a foundation for me to trust her. So for example, when Ida and I were first getting to know each other, we would start our one-on-ones with the usual, how are you, how is your weekend? But in the US, these questions don't really mean anything. They're kind of like, oh, hello. And so I'd keep it surface level by saying, oh, I don't know, it's relaxing. But Ida would press and ask me more questions like, so what's relaxing to you? How do you like to relax? And that really caught me off guard because one, that showed me that, oh, she really wants to get to know me as a person. And two, I would have to reveal to her that 
I played an unreasonable amount of Valorant over the weekend, and as some of you may know, that's not exactly a relaxing activity. And so ultimately, <laughs> Ida's curiosity in me made me feel safe to share with her when I was struggling with imposter feelings. And if you're curious, you get to know your colleagues, you get to know your mentees, and you actually can steer them into the right direction. And knowing people or steering them, every person has qualities. And pointing them down, pointing those qualities out is really helpful for their growth, which leads us to our next tip, which is giving praise. So a simple good job is already good. If you see something that you, you, that you like, say it out loud. It doesn't need to be someone more junior than you. It can be your manager. It can be anyone. Everyone feels better. Everyone feels great when someone says, you're bringing value to the table, and we like what you're doing. It's praise, it's often specific and honest. Uh, empty praises don't, go that, don't have the same impact as the authentic ones. For example, when I first joined Grafana, I was feeling extremely self-conscious about not being great at Golang, but it appraised me about other things that she thought I was good at. Like she would tell me that, Kat, people enjoy working with you. Um, and comments like that help bolster my confidence, which let me focus more so on the journey of enjoying learning Go rather than my lack thereof of technical knowledge in the moment. And so that right there is an example of affirming someone first as a human, Ida telling me that I'm good enough, people like working with me, and then second as a professional, where she would reassure me, Kat, you will learn Go. Everyone has learned a new language. Yes. <laughs> Another tip that we have is challenging negative self-talk. And so people struggling with imposter syndrome may use blanket statements such as, Oh, Ida, I'm so slow, I'm, such, I'm the world's slowest engineer. But in these moments, Ida would encourage me to dig deeper with thought-inducing questions. So she would ask me, Kat, why do you think you're slow? What have you been working on? And so by making me answer these questions in detail, I would realize that, oh, I made more progress than I thought that I did. You can also be kind and supportive, and so there's multiple ways to be supportive. You can be technically supportive, and you can be emotionally supportive. And so please check in with your colleagues to see if they're blocked on something or need help. Um, for me, it can take a really long time before I ask for help, because I tend to over-prepare for tasks, so I seem really capable. <laughs> Superheroism. But if I'm blocked, that can just be a waste of time. So Ida checking in on me to see if she can unblock me, or help me interrupts that cycle early on. Sometimes it's through pair programming, sometimes she points me in the direction of other resources, but at the end of the day, I feel supported. And from the perspective as of a supporter or the person who is supporting, you need to start with yourself. In my career, I experience, if any, also the two of us we experience, that if, if I'm stretched in, if I don't have the energy, if I have too many things on my plate, I cannot, and I'm not kind and supportive towards myself, I cannot be kind and supportive towards anyone else, so self-care is definitely a key to, to manage uh, this step. Share. Share about your weekend, about your loved one. Um, you can be personal, but not private. Uh, if you are re really worried about crossing some boundaries, that's a good, good way to, you can share to some extent, and, and that helps uh, definitely connecting with your team. And whenever I tell Ida I feel like an imposter, she would tell me that she's also felt that way, and hearing that made me feel less alone. And so don't underestimate the power of normalizing these imposter feelings. So giving praise, actively listening, and all of the above that we mentioned leads to connection. Connection not only helps with retention, that people actually want to stay and work on the team, it also helps with people who are suffering from imposter syndrome or other things that they feel safer in sharing their problems, and then that's the only way how to start tackling it. Also, be open. So this advice is great for your teammates, great for your uh, mentees, that you don't judge them, but it's actually great for yourself. So Kat and I, we are <laughs> cross-culture, cross-gender, cross-race, cross-generation. I'm a, so Kat is a Gen Z, I'm a young millennial. <laughs> and like, Infamously what's known about the Gen Z that they are really good with their boundaries when it comes to work-life balance. And when Kat would say like, Ida, you know what, I cannot take this on, this is, this is, I have too much on my plate, I would be like, oh my God, why am I so triggered? And I would explore that and find out, do you wish you could say no to things and you could be more focused on less things or one thing at the time and actually create better work or more quality? And that leads me to, mentoring is definitely a two-way street. Uh, I think 
me personally, I definitely got back everything I invested into mentoring. And my growth uh, happened in two different ways. So first one is live what you, uh, by what you preach. If you are holding to your, or encouraging your mentees to be, to, to be to up to a, a standard, you need to do the same. So for instance, before reject, I was really having a moment of panic. This is my first soft talk. I was thinking, oh my God, I don't know what I'm talking about. And then Catch reached out and they were also feeling a little bit insecure. And I told them, you know what? I think what we created in our work relationship, it really means something. I think it's really valuable and it helped us both grow a lot and overcome some things. And I think we're gonna do a great job. And then since then I couldn't panic that much anymore because I was encouraging someone else to, to be more confident. If, you're, if you feel like you don't know how to do these things, you don't know you're not a great share, you don't know how to connect, this is not your strength, you don't know how to get or give praise, just try it. I'm also working pro progress in all of these and you just learn it by doing it. Also explaining engineering concepts to other people definitely gives you even a deeper understanding of th those. So it will make you an overall better engineer. So these are my personal side effects of mentoring. I definitely feel much happier at work since I'm doing mentoring. If you want to be a leader, start with mentoring. That's how you can start developing your leadership skills. Or you can learn how to give feedback. As a mentor, you need to give, give feedback a lot and in a very sensitive way or in an empathic, uh, empathic way. You will definitely improve your communicational skills and you will become an overall better engineer. So Kat and I, we are really strong believers that mentoring is definitely a great thing to have and we would encourage all the managers and companies, make it, make it a priority, make it part of your values. Make also people, give them time to mentor, not that you code 40 hours a week and then in your free time you should do mentoring. It should be part of your work hours and also motivate people to do so, so promote people for mentoring. I really hope we sold you on the topic of mentoring because we really think it worked for us very well. So although the emphasis of our presentation is on mitigating imposter syndrome from a systemic point of view, we also wanna address managing imposter syndrome as an individual living in an imperfect world. So I wanted to start by sharing some of my biggest hurdles when I first did my career switch, Coming from a coding bootcamp and graduating from Grafana, or graduating from the coding bootcamp, Grafana was my first software engineering job. Coupled with learning a new programming language, it's safe to say that the learning curve was a little steep. And so I clearly felt my lack of technical knowledge. Some more uncharted territory was the fact that I was the first junior engineer to join my team. And I had to learn how to ask for support and my team had to learn how to support a junior engineer. I just didn't expect to have so much trouble figuring out how to figure things out, and I really struggled the most with being unable to meet my own high self-expectations. And so if you struggle with imposter syndrome, we want to provide you with some tools to feel empowered. We have some tips. This one starts with tips if you're in a supportive environment. And so I really encourage you to talk to your mentor or a trusted person because they don't know what you're going through unless you tell them and they can't help you unless they know. So give them an opportunity to challenge your negative self-talk. Another piece of advice I've been using myself a lot lately is speaking up when I don't know things. So if your colleagues are talking about Kubernetes and you don't know what clusters or nodes are, it doesn't hurt to speak up even if you feel like you should know the concepts because at least if you say something, you can take more away from the conversation. You can be be begin building your foundation of knowledge. You never know, maybe someone else is also scared to ask. And that. So now we have some tips, general tips, if you're in any environment, but I think these can be especially useful if you're in a less supportive environment or maybe you feel like you don't know who you can go to. So I'm a huge proponent of kudos sheets. They're a document where you record your accomplishments, not just your responsibilities. And so you can write down what you learned, what challenges you overcame, and if you don't know where to start, you can ask your teammate to brainstorm with you because sometimes they see something in you that you didn't. Mindfulness, we believe, is a skill you can strengthen. And so if you catch yourself making blatant statements like, oh, I'm so slow, I'm not good at learning new things, the first step is to catch yourself that you made that statement, and then that gives you a pause and a distance between the statement to decide, do I want to entertain these thoughts? Building community is really important as well. And if you feel alone right now because you don't know anyone who's going through the same thing, it doesn't always have to be that way. 
And so the way I go about building community is by being vulnerable and sharing about what I'm genuinely experiencing. Because what I found is that even if I casually mention something and it resonates with someone else, it could potentially plant the seed for a deeper relationship in the future. It's hard to be vulnerable. It's absolutely hard to be vulnerable and sometimes it doesn't feel safe to do so. So start small, dip your toes in, feel it out, see how it goes. Some last tips we had are seeking specific feedback. And so instead of me just asking Ida, do you have feedback for me? I could ask her, Ida, we just worked on the ID decommissioning project together. What do you think I did well? What do you think I could do better? And lastly, be patient with yourself. We get better at anything we practice. So get comfortable being uncomfortable. And so we wanted to leave you with the final story. When I first joined the company in 2021, Grafana Labs was really new to hiring juniors. There weren't many details for my level in the R&D progression framework, which is a document that's supposed to describe what skills and knowledge you should have at each level. But because Grafana took a chance on hiring me, it gave Ida the opportunity to hone her mentorship skills, and it gave us both the opportunity to work through our imposter syndromes together. So our point is, hire juniors, hire people who are different than you, support those people, because you don't know what lovely things might bloom from these connections. Thank you. Thank you. Please. You mentioned about, well, that's loud. You mentioned uh, taking time in working hours to do this. About how much time does it take? Um, so it depends. I think at the very beginning, it's definitely more time. It's also, I think, I think whatever you can give is good. But as uh, Kat mentioned at some point, like sometimes it was pair programming, sometimes it was pointing. Uh, I think it depends on your week, but I think when someone's more junior and they are joining a complex code base, it takes more time. I would say maybe at the very beginning, you can also count 50%. And then later on, it just, it just minimizes. Like the, but at the very beginning, you should invest in people because then they get onboarded much faster and also they get, become productive sooner. And also like when I first joined, Ida and I, I don't think we had one-on-ones every day, but then Ida asked me, she was like, how are you doing, Kat? And I was like, I would like to see you every day. And so, I mean, we were remote, so if I didn't see Ida, it was like I didn't see anyone the whole day. And so it's like, you can negotiate from there, you can like talk with your manager and see what they think, talk with your mentees, see what they need. And so you can fiddle, like figure it out from there. And also I think every person needs uh, something else. I think that could be also, maybe we are, we are more on a talkative side of uh, being in, in the engineering uh, sphere, so <laughs> we needed more time. Um, thank you for the talk. Um, in Germany, we have lots of people have this mindset, like, I didn't yell, so there's praise enough. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> I, I, um, I exaggerate, of course, but as a young person who um, changed the job recently, I try to praise my coworkers and the younger colleagues a lot for things that I think they did good. But have, do you have any tips how to nurture this um, mindset to get my colleagues to recuperate or to also praise things that they think is good? Do you have any tips from that? So I think what you're doing is already great. You're role modeling, you're showing what you want to get, but also ask for it. I, I mean, I know I was also socialized as a woman, it's hard, <laughs> but just try like, do you think I'm doing something well? Tell me what it is. I think if you feel not comfortable in a bigger group, just try to set up a one-on-one -on -one and ask the people you value their opinion and you think they can give good feedback, just ask them. And if your teams do retros, I think that's a good way to kind of, yeah, if they have that start category, you can be like, I would like to start receiving praise, or I would like you all to start giving me praise, or things of that nature. I have one um, about the, the mindfulness and the kudos sheet. Mm -hmm. Is that kudos sheet is something that 
in my previous company we call it the brack sheet oh, kind of thing. Exactly. Is same, the same same, same thing? Same thing. Same thing. Or, uh, <laughs> same thing. 